Let's talk crime. Gregory Green. There was not a lot of information that I could find about his childhood, but what I did know is that his parents loved him. He and his siblings um, attended church faithfully, and that pretty much sums that up. Fast forward to Gregory's 20s. He meets a woman by the name of Tanya, who by 1991 was his wife and also six months pregnant with their child. So Tanya had two children from a previous relationship and she was telling her friends and her family that she actually wanted to leave the relationship with Gregory because there was something off. He was acting really weird and his behavior had become extremely concerning. A former neighbor did say that the arguments that they had were always loud and that Gregory was so full of rage. And so I can only assume that this was not a healthy home. On July 14th, 1991, Gregory stabbed his wife Tanya 10 times in her face and her chest with a steak knife. This attack did kill their unborn child and it also happened while Tanya's other two children were in the home and thankfully they were not harmed. Gregory then calls 911 and tells them that he has killed his wife. Once officers arrive at the home, he tells them that he stabbed her and she was in the kitchen. Tanya did die. Gregory ends up going to trial in 1992 where he initially pled insane. He then pled no contest to second degree murder and ultimately was sentenced to 15 to 25 years in prison. He was never charged for the death of their unborn child. So you would think this monster has been locked away. Now this family can focus on healing but no, there is more and it is terrifying. While in prison, Gregory was denied parole four different times, two times in 2004 and two times in 2006. And this was because he showed absolutely no remorse for his crime. So according to documentation, other than one fight that he had with another inmate while incarcerated, Gregory was a model for the 16 years that he was in prison. So in 2005, a pastor from Detroit by the name of Fred Harris writes a letter to the parole board on behalf of Gregory Green. And the letter says, Gregory and I were friends before his mishap and he was incarcerated. He was a member of our church. I feel he has paid for his unfortunate lack of self-control and the damage that he has caused as much as possible. And he is sorry. If he were to be released, he would be welcomed as a part of our church community and whatever we could do to help him just we would. So in 2008, when Gregory was 42 years old, he was paroled from the Michigan Department of Corrections. Shortly after that, he ends up marrying a woman named Faith Harris. Now, this is not just a random woman that he ran into it, but it happens to be the daughter of the pastor Fred Harris, who was lobbying for his release from prison. So Faith Harris had two children from a previous relationship and she and Gregory ended up having two children together within the six years that they were married. In 2013, Faith Harris filed for a restraining order against Gregory, stating that he was being belligerent, threatening her and saying that if she doesn't leave, things would get ugly and that this had gone on for hours on one incident. And this restraining order was denied due to insufficient evidence. Now, later in that same year, Faith did file for divorce, but for some reason, the paperwork did not go through and I'm not totally sure why. I do know that when I filed for divorce, that it didn't go through and that's because I did not show up to the court day and ultimately was dismissed um, because I was convinced that we were working on things. And so maybe that's what happened in this situation as well. Over the years, there were multiple domestic related calls from their home. Neighbors did say that they seemed normal and the kids did appear to be happy. They had multiple birthday parties in the backyard, a trampoline, and Gregory seemed like a nice guy. Faith and the children at one point did move out from the home for about a year and 
then they came back into the home that they shared with Gregory uh, after she and Gregory had decided to uh, reconcile. In August 2016, Faith files for divorce once again. One month later, Gregory would cause an indescribable amount of pain to another family. In the early morning hours of September 21st, 2016, Gregory manipulated a plastic tube from the exhaust of his Toyota to the inside of the vehicle where his two children, Kaylee, four, and Coy, who was five years old, were inside. This was until they died. He then carried their small bodies to their rooms and laid them in their beds. His wife, Faith, was bound with duct tape and zip ties in the basement of their Dearborn Heights home. He had slashed her face with a box cutter and shot her foot. Her teenage children, 17-year-old Kara and 19-year-old Chadney, had been shot and killed execution style, and Faith had to watch her children die. In the same MO as before, Gregory calls 911, tells them that he has shot his family and that they were inside the home. He then waits in the driveway for the authorities to arrive. February 2017, he pled guilty to second degree murder, torture, and assault with intent to do great bodily harm. He was found competent to stand trial. Faith showed up to his sentencing hearing on March 1st, 2017 in a wheelchair. Justice will come when you burn in hell for all eternity for murdering four innocent children. You're a con artist. You are a monster. He was given a sentence of 47 to 102 years in prison. Now, if he got out after 47 years, he would be 97 years old. But the damage he has caused, the pain he has inflicted, prayerfully the state of Michigan will get it right and Gregory Green will come out in a box.